One of the organizers for last week's Stop the Steal protest, which turned into, of course, into the Capitol riot, uh, said he had a little bit of help planning the protest, protest, uh, from uh, members of Congress. So now this is a fun story. Twists and turns. Lots of people getting thrown under the bus here. Uh, and so let's start this out. This is a Washington Post uh, reporting that right-wing activist Ali Alexander. Um, this is funny. Okay. Uh, Ali, Ali Alexander said he and GOP lawmakers identified as Representative Andy Biggs, Representative Mo Brooks, and Paul Gozar, all Republicans, uh, two from Arizona, one from Alabama, planned the protest as a means to put pressure on Congress to reject the certification of Biden's election win. So basically the whole purpose is to overturn the election uh, based on conspiracy theories of voter fraud. So, well, here's what he said, quote, we four schemed up putting up maximum pressure on Congress while they were voting. Alexander said in a video that has since been deleted. We hope to change the hearts and minds of Republicans who are in that body, hearing our loud roar from outside. Well, you certainly did that. You certainly made a, made a fuss. A little bit of a ruckus, okay, when you stormed into the Capitol doing insurrectiony stuff. All right, insurrectiony stuff. So now remember, even though Republican, the Republican congressmen are like, well, we didn't mean for this riot to happen. We didn't mean for, no, insurrection, what are you talking about? It's a protest, First Amendment. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, both sides, agitators, blah, 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 uh, Antifa. Uh, we just, did, we didn't want this to happen, okay? We didn't want this to happen. Please don't go on that, come after us, okay? Okay, please don't, please don't do that. Well, I'm gonna call BS, big BS. Uh, because remember, the same congressmen uh, were voting to not certify the election in order to help Donald Trump steal the election, which, uh, of course, is, uh, is sort of problematic when it comes to democracy. You know, I mean, not accepting the results of an election that you've lost, that has been counted, there's been recounts, court cases, and no evidence of widespread, uh, wide-scale voter fraud, no reason to not certify the results of this election. And so, yeah, you, you, you were part of that body that was trying to steal the election from somebody else while ironically saying stop the steal. Hmm. Okay. And so now, again, these congressmen work with this guy, work with Trump to put, quote unquote, maximum pressure on other Republicans to join in that theft, which admitted, you know, involved storming the Capitol. So now get this, right? So Elaine Alexander, they looked into him a little bit. They, they, they dug into his history. Right. To some of the things that he said, some of the things that he's, you know, uh, uh, posted before uh, and they find out that the guy and also his criminal record, he's got a criminal record. Uh, now, apparently, Alexander, no stranger to theft. He had actually pleaded guilty more than a decade ago to property theft and credit card abuse. So the same person. And look, I'm not going to hold that like against him, uh, but it is important to note that he is a criminal who has stolen uh, before. So again, it's sort of ironic that he's coming out and saying stop the steal now, but hey, people can change in 10 years. So all right, whatever. Um, now he organized this, which was aimed at overturning Donald Trump's election loss and, organ and announced a plan for the January 6th protest last month uh, and suggested the president's supporters try to disrupt the certification by storming the Capitol. That's what's really important about this. Now he's saying, because you're going to see him uh, in a video coming up. Uh, we're saying, well, everything's peaceful. Um, you know, uh, I, I like peaceful protests. I, I, I didn't really want to storm the Capitol. Uh, but, you know, I, I prefer peaceful protests. Well, again, we're going to call BS on that. Okay. So now here's what he said. Quote, everyone can guess what me and 500,000 others will do to that building. Alexander tweeted in December, according to the Daily Beast, 1776 is always an option. Now that's not bluster, okay? That's not, that, that's insurrection-y stuff, okay? So that's important. Sounds like insurrection to me, okay? And so these guys, these Republican congressmen, they were working with this guy to plan this whole thing. 
Now, of course, if you ask a congressman, they're like, oh, no, 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 what are you talking about? No, 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 I, I never work with those guys. What are you talking about? In fact, the spokesman for Biggs insists a congressman had never been knowingly been in contact for, with Alexander, who was also known as Ali Akbar. I wonder if it's a trap. Oh, I couldn't resist that joke. Okay, that's really bad. Uh, and neither Brooks nor Gozar had responded to requests for comment. Mm. Mm. Uh, but as I'm going to show you, uh, Alexander does have ties to these congressmen, as well as, of course, to the White House. Uh, for one, Alexander took part in a social media summit back in July at the White House. Gozar described him as a quote-unquote true patriot after they both spoke at a Stop the Steal rally in December 19th in Phoenix, Arizona, where Alexander led a crowd in a chant of 1776. Quote, we will not go quietly. We'll shut down this country if we have to. insurrection -y stuff. All right, more. Uh, actually, there's a video of Gosar walking around that same rally where Alexander spoke. Take a look. How many of you went to vote and were told, no, 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 don't use a pen, don't use a pen, no, 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 use one of these Sharpies, okay? Meanwhile, if you read the actual ballot, it literally says, do not use a Sharpie, okay? And how did they get the Indian reservations, which just broke earlier yesterday? How did they get the Indian reservations? All right, so that's Gozar. He's walking around and listening to the speaker. All right, uh, and so, all right, there's that. And there's another tweet here, uh, by the way. Um, but first, before I get to that, that I, that I want to show you uh, from Paul's, Paul uh, Gozar, let's go back to Alexander, who played a video message from Biggs, calling him a, quote, friend and hero. In the recording, Biggs said he wished that he could have attended the event and vowed to challenge the certification of President-elect Joe Biden's electoral victory. Uh, when it comes to January 6th, I will be right down there, as well as the House, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in the well of the House, with my friend from Alabama, Representative Mo Brooks, Biggs said in the recording. Uh, a tweet from Alexander, including the message from Biggs, was retweeted by Donald Trump on December 26th. Uh, and again, I want to show you uh, Gozar here uh, in that tweet. Pay attention to who he tagged. Uh, Biden should concede. I want his concession on my desk tomorrow morning. Don't make me come up with it. And he's got hashtag stop to steal, obviously. And look at the tag. At Ali. Huh. Now, of course, that Twitter account uh, at Ali has been suspended. So, hmm. Probably went along with the QAnon purge. Uh, of these accounts that were pushing for insurrection. Um, but yet, I went and, and I found that tweet today. It is still up on Paul Gozar's account. Holy crap. Still up. Didn't even bother to take it down. All right. Wow. Uh, so one more uh, piece of the article here that we've got. Now, Alexander told The Post that he, quote, remained peaceful during this riot insurrection, disavowed it, but then, but also uh, the Washington Post uh, noted that they had posted a video of himself, uh, that he had posted a video of himself about two hours after the Capitol was breached, expressing support for the violence that was unfolding. Uh, in fact, here's that video. Take a look. This is we the people, the growing frustrations of the government and what's happening now is exactly what I've warned about. I've said that we need to make fair elections and transparent counting so that the people do not feel like the last resort is public demonstrations like this. Now, I want to say something. I don't disavow this. I do not denounce this. This is completely peaceful, looks like so far. And there are a couple of agitators that I obviously don't endorse, but this is completely peaceful. A couple of agitators. Just a couple. I mean, they're not ours. I mean, <laughs> this is a couple of agitators that are probably Antifa. I mean, you know, I mean, you're sure they're carrying Trump flags and they're, you know, dressed up with, uh, with like horns and, and fur, you know, like the 
Hugh Shaman, uh, who is currently in, in, in jail right now. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're dressed in Trump flags and everything. But, you know, the outside agitators. That's all they are. You know, it's funny. Ali Alexander, you saw, you saw what he looks like, right? No, 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 I'm not going in that direction. So calm down. It's going to be fine. Uh, I'm just saying that, like, that's the kind of person that Trump supporters don't want in their group. Their group filled with white supremacists and neo Nazis and KKK members, those violent insurrectionists. What are you doing, Ali? What are you doing? Why? You're palling up with people that want you dead. Amazing. It's amazing. Uh, but no, it also wasn't peaceful. Again, this was two hours after they stormed into the building, broke windows. And by the way, there's a story that came out today uh, where there's a representative, I believe it was Ayanna Presley, her office, the panic buttons had been stripped out. I'm serious. Panic buttons stripped out. Inside job, perhaps. I mean, that's really the only thing that could explain that. But anyway, there's no way that this guy did not know what went down, which is why he's throwing everybody under the bus. I mean, it, that's the only, that's really the only explanation that I could find. Okay. And so what we have here is a situation of Republican and Republican crime. And I always love Republican on Republican crime. Uh, but seriously, though, the politicians, Gozar, Brooks, Biggs, they need to be investigated. There needs to be an investigation into them. How much they knew, what they, what their role was in this, uh, and depending on the results of what happened, uh, removed from office and possibly even charged for aiding and abetting this. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.